Okay, now we're going to solve an equation that has a radical sign in it. And this is a, actually a four-step process. You want to isolate the radical by moving everything else over to the other side. Then you'll square both sides, and then you need to solve. And step four is to check for extraneous solutions. So we'll see this in action right now. So the idea is that we want to move everything that isn't under the radical over to the other side of the equation. So I'm going to write this as the square root of x plus 3 equals x minus 3. So I subtracted 3 from both sides to get to here. And now, in step 2, you're going to square both sides. And when you do that, you get x plus 3 equals um, x minus 3 squared, or you can write that as x squared minus 6x plus 9 by foiling. And um, just so you see how that works, that's, that's x squared minus 3x minus 3x um, plus negative 3 squared, which is 9. So that's how I got down there. Okay. So once you've foiled, you see that this is a, a quadratic equation. The biggest power is, um, is a square. So if we move the um, x and the 3 over to the other side, we'll get a quadratic equation in its usual form. So it's x squared minus 6x plus 9 minus x minus 3. So we subtracted the x and the 3 over to the other side. And now we just group like terms. We'll get 0 equals x squared minus 7x plus 6. And we can solve this either using the quadratic formula or by factoring. Um, if you try to factor this, you'll see that we want something that multiplies to be 6 and adds up to be negative 7. And so your options are negative 1 and negative 6. You could try 2 and 3, but that doesn't add up to be negative 7. Okay. And then now that we have x minus 1 equals 0 times x minus 6 equals 0, either x equals 1 or x equals 6. Those are our possible solutions. And the reason why I say possible solutions is that when we squared both sides up here in step 2, so all the way back here, when we squared both sides of the equation, we might have introduced some extraneous solutions. So step 4 is to check for extraneous solutions. Those are extra solutions. That, that actually don't satisfy the equation. So to do that, what you do is you write down your equation, x plus 3, um, square root of x plus 3 plus 3 equals x, and I've just put parentheses wherever there's an x, and you're going to write down as many copies of this as you need, or as you have possible solutions, and then you're going to check. So when I plug in x equals 1, I should see whether or not this is true, and if I plug in x equals 6, I should see whether or not it's true. So if I plug in 1, then I get the square root of 4 plus 3 equals 1. And again, we're, we're asking whether or not this value of x actually makes the equation true or not. And in this case, um, we get 2 plus 3 equals 1. Nope, that doesn't work. Um, and so I think the part, the reason why that's true is, or why this shows up as not being true is because if you were to um, if you were to move the 3 over the other side and square both sides you would get that as the solution but this original equation it doesn't make it true okay so this is this first one is false it's, it's an extraneous solution it doesn't work but if I plug in x equals 6 I do get a solution because I'll get the square root of 9 plus 3 is equal to 6 well I'm saying 3 plus 3 equals 6 so this does work. And so the takeaway here is that the only solution is x equals 6.